Hey everybody, it's Matt from Eastwood Company. We're here doing another live Eastwood Tech session in the Eastwood Garage. For any of you guys that haven't watched one of these before, we want it to be as interactive as possible. We want you guys to log on, join the chat, ask questions, and uh, get involved, share the, uh, the broadcast. Uh, if, over here in the chat, manning that today, we have Scott. And, and uh, make sure you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll definitely knock them out while we're here, or I can also shoot them over to Matt. Um, and make sure you like and subscribe to our Facebook and YouTube so you always see the notifications, so you get to watch fun videos like this. All right, cool. Thanks, Scott. And uh, today what we're going to be doing is uh, I've done a bunch of videos even just recently on TIG basics, using a couple of our different TIG machines and how to use them and how to get set up. I'm going to jump into something that's a little more uh, intermediate to advanced. Uh, something that I, I see people a lot of discussion online about is uh, repairing curbed rashed wheels or damaged aluminum wheels. Uh, with most of, most of the cars today, modern cars coming with aluminum wheels, or if you're working on something that has aftermarket wheels um, that maybe you can't replace, uh, repairing them is sometimes the best thing that you can do. Once you have a TIG welder and learn, it's uh, actually quite easy to do. Uh, so you can see this wheel here that I have is just a factory wheel, but it has a bunch of curb rash up in this top section here. This is some of the lighter curb rash on this wheel. Um, I have a section over here that was pretty bad. I, ha I have already prepped this section. A lot of the time in doing this project is preparing the metal, cleaning everything up. So I've taken a couple of those steps already, but I wanted you guys to see kind of, you know, that's, that's a, a light curb rash you can fix real quick. I'm going to tackle some of these harder ones here. So I had one that was gouged pretty bad. So it looks like they started somewhere over here and they scraped probably half this wheel up against the curb uh, with it probably getting the worst right in here. So this section is pretty deep in here. Uh, it wasn't quite that deep to begin with, but what happens is even on these lighter ones, you can see the, the scratches or, or gouging that's in the, in the metal, some is deeper than other. Um, and there's all, also, as you can see, it's all black in there. It's filled up with dirt and uh, you know, we need to get all that out. So what I've started by doing is I took, um, I took, started with a flap disc here on just one of our angle grinders. It's a four half inch grinder with a flap disc. I find it works real quick if you're just trying to knock the metal down or you know, knock it down, blend it in. But you have to be careful because this does work really fast and you can take too much metal away if you're not careful with it. So I knocked it down with that just to get the heavy black um, contamination out of the metal. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the, uh, the, the die grinder here with one of our, um, I call them diamond bits, but, I, but uh, one of our carbide cutting bits that uh, work really well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in here, gouge out the middle metal a little bit more just to make sure I got all the, all the uh, major dirt and contaminants out of here first. So just give me a couple seconds. So what I did is make sure I got in the corners or in the edges here uh, on the wheel. And I got rid of the sharp edges that were kind of the, where the, the sharp impact had happened. I kind of rounded more down like that. There we go. I got rid of some of the, uh, the sharp corners that was a curb rash throughout. So I kind of blended all of that out, but it's actually got some wave to it and is lower. There's one right here that was pretty bad, that worse, I should say, um, than some of the others that you can see it's lower. So what I usually do is, uh, we know that this is probably low from here to here at the least, if not further, but I'm gonna try and focus on this area here first. So I'm gonna probably start welding further out than the actual heavy damage because it's actually a little low here and we wanna put some material back into it, uh, into the work or into the, uh, into the lip of the wheel and, and then repair that. So. Uh, I've hit that with the die grinder with the carbide bits. Uh, there's a bunch of different, this is my little kit from home actually, but I got a bunch of different sizes in here. And these come in all different shapes. 
and sizes that will help. have it full pressure. I wasn't pushing hard. I was just lightly blending it in. So that's what you want to make sure you do. These things can cut steel pretty quickly. So on aluminum, they really eat up material. And if you push too hard or go too quick with the grinder, uh, it will cause more damage than anything. So I got this uh, grinded out here. I like the shape. Uh, what I have here, uh, I'm just going to go over it once with, I have a little, one of our stainless brushes here. And we always like to write what type of metal it's being used for. So I'm going to use the, uh, the aluminum one, of course. And I'm going to get in here and make sure I just get anything obvious that might be in there. Uh, because this is a big, something that's a big aluminum part, we are going to have to preheat it here in a few seconds. Um, so I'm not going to go as crazy as I would if this was a, uh, if this was something smaller that we didn't need to preheat. Now the other set thing you can see here is I hit the back side of this wheel. You need to make sure that you clean both sides of the material because uh, if we left the paint on the back of this or the powder coating, it may start to, to, um, to burn off and it may actually burn and, and kind of pull into our, into our weld and cause some additional contaminants that we don't want. So I've hit that with the grinder as well, gotten all the material off. And we're also going to heat that area with the, uh, with the torch. So what I have here just to make things simple today is I have a little map gas uh, torch. You can use an oxyacetylene torch. You can use a propane torch, but it takes, you're going to have to sit there quite a bit longer um, to heat the material. So I'm going to use map gas. It's, pr it's pretty quick and it should help um, heat the metal up. But what we're trying to do is do two things here. I'm trying to, and I'll talk while I'm doing this. Let me put some gloves on here real quick. And don't forget that, you know, if you have any questions about the process or anything we're doing, uh, throw some questions over to Scott and he will answer them or shoot them over to me. So I'm going to turn the gas on here. And what I'm trying to do, there's two things as I was mentioning. I'm trying to burn out, number one, any contaminants that are in the metal. So I'm trying to burn them out and kind of, by preheating it, we're getting, we're getting the metal up to temperature and we're cooking out any, any contaminants in that area where we're welding. The other thing is we're getting this metal up to temperature. Since this is a pretty large aluminum piece here, it's going to soak up my heat. And the beginning of my weld it might be too cool. And I may have problems with it getting it hot enough to really lay the weld in there. So I'm running over it, trying to heat everything up and also burn out any contaminants. So I'm going to get in these corners here. And I may uh, I see a little. section here where there's a little bit of powder coat left. So you can use a rosebud torch on an oxyacetylene, uh, rosebud tip on an oxyacetylene torch. That would work well as also if you have one of those. You can also preheat this if you have a nice powder coating oven. A uh, larger one you can preheat in the oven, just like you would for powder coat. So right now I'm just burning some off. Then I'm going to shut this off, turn the machine on. And we'll do a little more preheating as we go. I think I got most of my junk burned out here. Okay. So I got most of my junk burned out. I'm going to go back in and probably heat right before we weld but I want to go over the, some of the setup on the machine. Um, and it's okay if it cools a little bit, but we'll put some heat back into it. It does hold heat for quite a while, which is nice as, 
as well. While you're setting that up, I got a couple of good ones for you. Sure. Uh, so uh, one of them, Ben Coster asked, uh, "What series? How do you know what series aluminum the wheel is? So you know to choose a similar filler rod." Um, the the aluminum in the wheel uh, is really difficult to to figure out unless you can go right back to the um, unless you can go right back to the manufacturer and see what it is. Uh, a nice mid-range uh, filler rod to use, is what, like we're using today, is, is 4043. Uh, that's a good mid-range that you can use that will play friendly with most of the wheels I've found. Um, it doesn't have an issue. The, the, if you want to match it exactly, um, even if we got the same material that this was out of, if we found out that this was 4043 and we used 4043 on it, the 4043 may be slightly different because it was made at a different time, might be a slightly different grade, et cetera, you know, as far as how, you know, what was the purity and everything that was made with. So if you went to polish this out, you'd always see a slight difference in, in the hue of the repair or the, or the area that you welded. So that's, that's really difficult to do. Uh, with some aluminum welding, if you want it exactly the same. But I, for all intents and purposes, uh, most times, uh, is there any fear with uh, warping the, the, the wheel when we're heating it? And my, my answer is no. Uh, the, the heat that we're putting into this wheel is not enough to actually warp the wheel. Um, this big, it's basically just a big chunk of aluminum here. Uh, it would take an incredible amount of heat to actually cause this to warp. The little bit that we're putting in a focused area isn't enough to actually warp the wheel. Um, if you're getting to that point, that would be at the point of, of, you know, like a car being on fire and it's burning for a very long, long time. We're not doing that. We're just heating up a, a, a focused area that's probably, you know, between these two spokes here is where the heat um, affected area is. And down below a little bit, it's heating into it. So, no, you don't have to worry about um, overheating it unless you're sitting there for, you know, days or you got your oxyacetylene torch with the cutting tip cranked up and you might start causing damage. Is that it? Cool. All right. So I got 100% argon, got the Eastwood TIG 200, uh, AC-DC machine. You need to be welding on the AC side. And I'm going to crank this on. And I have the foot pedal hooked up here. I have our new, I'm going to be pumping the pedal to put heat in and out as I dip the filler rod in. So this thing doesn't, uh, doesn't move around on the floor as much because of the ergonomics of it. So I really like that. Uh, for that reason. So I got the pedal set up to about, I got it cranked up pretty good today. I'm going to crank it up a little more. Probably about 170 amps is the max, 170, 180. Um, because this is a pretty thick piece of metal here, we're going to need to put a bit of amperage into it to get, uh, to get that filler rod to really melt in. Uh, again, I got it on AC. I have the clearance effect and I haven't, I haven't welded on this wheel. I wanted to show you guys just what it's like if you're doing this, you know, on something you never welded before. We're going to have to figure out the clearance effect. So I have it set uh, oops, at uh, about negative three on the clearance. The tighter your arc's going to be. So it's going to keep it a narrower arc. Um, and you're going to get a little bit better... Um, you're going to put more heat directly into the piece. So I want to be, I want a nice tight arc on this because we're trying to fill this area in here. I don't want it to be too wide and heating up a big area. Now the downside of that is what we may have to balance out is uh, depending how dirty this metal is, uh, when, we start, when we start welding it, it may call for us to go a little more towards the positive side because it'll have more of a cleaning effect and a little wider of a puddle. But uh, I'm going to try and keep it pretty tight and narrow here. We'll see how it works out as we, uh, we strike up an arc. I have the post flow or the pre flow set at 0.4 seconds. I have it turned up a little bit more than I normally would, but if I was just welding steel, I would have it down at probably 0.2. So I have it cranked up to 0.4 right now on the pre flow. And what that's gonna do is give us a little bit of extra in that little pocket where we're welding ahead of time before we even strike an arc to, you know, again, help us keep it clean. Then on the post flow side, I have it cranked up to, well actually I'm going to crank it up to probably almost four seconds here. I want that extra flow of gas afterwards more than what I would normally do, probably an extra second or so, um, so that I can really keep the 
uh, shielding gas over that metal because we're going to get pretty hot and it's going to take a little bit for that, that aluminum to kind of go back to a solid state. So I want to make sure I have that uh, nice and cool or uh, nice and long. Now also on the, on the uh, again, I have 100% argon. I have it cranked up to in, uh, but I'll hit this pedal here and Joe can probably see the little ball. This is our, our upgraded uh, flow meter. You can see it probably gets up to about 20 there. It should get, should get up to is where I had it set. So when we're welding, I'm going to hit it again so you can see it. I'm going to do it one more time. So you can see the ball goes up and float, and as we adjust the knob, get it where you want. So I have the pressure cranked up just a little bit more just so that I can get, again, some extra shielding gas, keep it uh, as clean as possible. I have on the torch set up, I have uh, just our standard torch that comes with a TIG 200, and, and I have one of our gas lens kits attached with a number 8 cup. And the gas lens kit is very, very important material without having to change the tungsten, which is great. Nice stable arc, uh, especially at higher amperages like we're going to be welding today. So that's that. So I'm going to turn the torch back on and start heating this and trying to get my helmet on all in one shot. And then uh, if you guys have any questions, shoot them over. And while you're heating that up, uh, Scott has asked if, uh, I know we're on aluminum wheels today, but wants to know if you know if you can do it on magnesium wheels. If you can repair magnesium wheels? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can, you can repair magnesium wheels. Um, the question was, can you repair magnesium wheels? Uh, the question is, yes, you can. Uh, but you, generally, I don't have a ton of experience with magnesium welding, but the little bit I, I messed with, you do need to put it in a chamber that's filled with, with shielding gas. Uh, to weld it. It does need to be welded with a TIG welder and you need to put it, uh, the actual wheel will need to be almost in like a blast cabinet with shielding gas filled in it to help keep it pure. So that's something that's really high up on the expert level. I wouldn't suggest that unless you have the cabinet to do it in and you're really comfortable with your welding. But yes, it can be done. I've seen it done. I've seen old race wheels where they, they fill the lug holes and redrill them. So it is possible, but it's uh, not something I would try for your first project. So I'm just heating this up, really trying to focus my, uh, my heat into where I'm going to be welding. Some heat there. If you got a friend, you can get a friend to hold the uh, hold the torch for you while you get set up. I'm gonna multitask. I think we need to turn the our machine on, yep, machine's on. I'm gonna move my ground clamp here. I have an area that I cut, that I uh, already ground on the side of the wheel. Make sure I get a good ground. So I'm going to get into this pretty quick so we don't cool down too much. I'm going to scuff my rod, the filler rod here. So I'm going to start over outside. So I'm letting that see all those contaminants burn off. Whoop. So I don't have much on the pedal. I'm just kind of letting that stuff burn off before I start adding any filler rod here. All right. I'm 
on the side and a little. You can see I got a little bit let off. Okay, so um, you can see I didn't want to go too much further here. I, ne I need to, I had a little bit of black contaminant that was starting to pop up as I went out because I didn't kind of, I didn't run the torch over it to let it clean all the way out into here too much. Um, so I didn't, I didn't, I started to see some, some black in there. So I didn't want to go too much further so we don't get contaminants. But you can see I've done one pass and we filled our bevel, you know, our beveled area a little bit. I'm going to hit this area and then I'm going to jump right back into it. So don't be afraid to do multiple passes. It's not going to hurt anything. All right, so I'm going to jump back in, do another one. that gas flow. You can see that we're getting to, starting to fill that puddle in. I still got a little bit of a low spot here in the center. Just a little bit, but we're, we're filling on the back side here. Uh, on the front side here, I have a little spot. Oh, maybe I'll turn it here for Joe if you guys can see. Yep. So you can see in there, I got a little spot. You can see how the, that's telling me that's got some Contaminant on this side, so before I start hitting this area in here, I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely hit that with the wire brush to make sure. But there's a little spot in here that the that the the damage went, you know, when we gouged it out went a little below there. So I'm gonna go back in there. Uh, I'm gonna do one more pass on the top to kind of get us fairly level, and I'm gonna come back in, flip the wheel up. We'll do this area in here, and there's a little spot on the back side we'll do as well. To get so let me um. Now we got some good heat in it. I don't got to kind of rush around as much. By welding it, we put a crap ton of heat into it. So I'm going to go back in. I'm going to actually turn my pedal down just a little bit. All right. All right. Oh, let me put my gloves. Welding gloves are key here. Something to, to extra for your hand because it gets nice and warm out there. Right. So again, I'm starting back from that low point. That's better on my pedal. I can see it. Now. I'm putting a couple extra dabs there. I'm going to turn my torch a little bit and try to blend it down a little bit. Just blend that puddle down. I'm come back up here and a little bit of filler. off. Now you can see we're getting, it's good now. We're not, we actually want this to be a little high on the, uh, our filler material to actually be a little high because we want, you want to be able to either take it on a, depending how professional you're making this, you either want to put it on a lathe and cut it off or you're going to use a sander and gently sand it all in and, and blend it in and make it all pretty again. So you want to put some extra material on so that's why I was working further out, building it up. We got our center area is filled up, our, our is the beveled area is filled up, and that's good there. So now I, what I can do is flip it up on its side here. It might be a little harder to see because we're blocking the light, but um, let's see. Again, comf getting comfortable is our key. This is one of the keys here. So I want to make sure that I can get in there and. Well, that should be able to. So since we haven't touched this area with the torch too much, I need to make sure that I go in and let the, uh, the AC alternating current kind of clean the metal here so I can get a repair. And you can turn this torch kind of any which way you want. So I'm turning it just so I can get my torch in right where I want. 
All right. Still on the same piece of filler rod, which is nice. And whenever you're ready, Joe. Ready. All right. All right. So I'm I'm cleaning out out ahead. So I'm going to do a pass over it, just kind of letting it clean. i make sure. Alright, so I come out. Light pedal, I'm barely on the pedal, just enough to initiate an arc. Let it clean down in that valley where I really want to put the material. Alright. Alright, now when I get in here, I'm going to soak. Put a big blob of wood, not blob, but a big dab of filler in there right when I hit the pedal. And then I'll hit it to kind of blend it all in. So I'm not even using extra filler here. Alright, so we'll turn this so you can see. But that little valley is now filled. We didn't get too much into this, into the actual natural curve or, you know, the original line here of the wheel. I tried to stay off of that so that that way we can follow all of that and all we're doing is just sanding this flat with a sander to blend it all in. So let me flip it up the other way. Good? Okay. Other way. So on the back side here, I'll turn so you guys can see it before I weld it, but on the back side here, pretty good. It's filled pretty well, but what I'm going to do is just put a Uh, it's pretty good, but I'm going to put a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit more filler right in here, just because it's. Uh, I want to have it kind of like this area here is and there. I want to just add a couple extra dabs, so again we have enough to just blend it all in when we're sanding it. It's easier to just sand it a little bit more, especially when you're working with aluminum, to get it down. So I'm going to do a quick little pass, just adding a couple little dabs in here, and through there. And then we should have it filled enough that we can do a quick blend for you guys to let you see. So this one, uh, it's up to you. You can, if you want to, great. I'm going to be, so here I'm flipping the wheel up because I want to get comfortable. The key is you want to keep your, your arm supported at all times. So this area here, I want to, it would be hard for me to be down and welding this and have my arm resting. So I'm going to use my arm right on the wheel here. Um, and we're going to weld. Any uh, questions, Scott, before I hit this quick little spot here? Right now, we're good. Cool. I'm either doing a really good job or this is really boring. No, we have, be, we have a lot of viewers, so we're definitely very intrigued by this. Cool, cool. Uh, this is... I threw away a lot of wheels before I learned how to do this. All right, so I'm going to do this, this little top area here real quick. Just trying to get my wrist balanced. And all right. So again, I'm just going to run over this. I know we're not under the lens here, but I'm just... Uh, same thing, just burning off the uh, excess, just contamination light that's left in the metal of the area where I want to weld. And now I'm going to come back and actually start Adding filler just to blend it all in. I got to move pretty quick here because we're on the top edge and it wants to open up on me. There at the end, it split a little bit. I saw there must have been something in the metal there. I didn't clean far enough out, so that's actually a good stopping point. All right, so let's flick the machine off here. So I'll show you guys this and then I'll quick hit it 
just real quick with the sander, blend it in a little bit, and then we, uh, if you guys have any questions, that'll be your last chance to uh, ask for those. So let me just get any. So, obviously our repaired area is from here to here. Uh, when I'm looking out, we have, we have a bit of extra material on there. Um, but that's perfect to blend it back down and get it to the same height as what we're working on here. We still have this little spot here that I haven't fixed yet. I'm going to flip this down real quick. So I got it closer, so what I would do from here, if I was kind of doing a final, uh, final work on this. Flip that down too quick. So we got the, uh, just the file kit. So I would find a file that, you know, fit best here. And I could start. Just slowly filing until I get it. So I know that I'm kind of level with the areas on the other side of it. This is if you don't have a lathe to do this with. So you can, if you have a, a way, you could take it to a lathe. If you have a big enough lathe, you could just take it on a lathe and trim and, and take just a little extra off. But if you're just a guy in your home shop trying to fix a wheel, this is the way to do it. Just take a file, hit it with a sander, get it close, and then work it with the file. Luckily, this is aluminum, so. It moves pretty quick. If you have any final questions, I'm just going to finish this up. We'll show it to you, and then, uh, then we'll be done. Any yeah. uh, as of right now, one uh, someone asked what uh, the grit you started with when you were on the uh, on the grinder. Is that 36 or 50? Oh, okay, good. Yeah, so I was using, I did skip over that. I was using uh, 36 grit when I'm just knocking it down real uh, real quick. Again, just like using the, the, uh, the little carbide bits, you got to be careful. You can't lean into it too much. Uh, the nice thing I like about this versus using the flap disc is it's a little bit flexible. So it's not as rigid, so you can't dig holes in it. Uh, so with light pressure, I can kind of work around. Um, I have a second. If you need to, you can, you can swap down to one of these smaller little three inch guys and get in these little crevices if you have to. I swap them back and forth as need be. Uh, for this particular section, this was not too complex. So I would do the 36 grit just to knock it down real fast. And then I'll come back with uh, a file just to knock down any uh, spots to get it real close. And then from there, you can, you can polish it back up. You can go up to, to 80, 120, 220, 320, all the way to a mirror polish if you want. Um, but you guys don't have time to watch me do that. Today. So all I'm doing is just kind of looking for any, any low spots or high spots. But 
we're getting pretty level there. And to avoid watching you guys, having you guys watch me sand for an hour and a half, that's where all the time takes. The prep, the, the welding is quick. It's the, the, the time before and after that really is what separates a good job in the end. So, I mean, that's just a quick, sand, uh, quick hit with the file in here. Uh, for anybody that, was, that came into us late, that was the area that I repaired in there that had a, had a uh, deep cut that was all the way into here. You can, uh, there's actually a little bit of damage from when it hit the curb there still, which I could put a little bit of filler, heat up and uh, dab a filler. But right in here is where we repaired, probably from here to here. I fouled it off and got it roughly flat there. It probably needs just a tiny bit more. Um, but I mean, now you can see how quickly with just roughing it in, I can get it back to good and then you just all in how long you want to take it to make it nice again. I mean, depending on what you're doing, you may just want to fill it in like this, sand it a little more and you're going to powder coat it. It may fit, it may, the powder coat may fill some tiny little imperfections, no big deal. If you're trying to mirror polish this, you got to take your time and just take every little pit and imperfection out. But that's pretty good. That would be our next spot and we'd just keep working away around our wheel until we had a nice, uh, perfect finish. So, pretty happy with that for how quick we did it. Any other questions? No other questions other than Chris Woodruff might want a uh, note to get out of work because we've inspired him to go do some welding. Awesome. Yeah, that's what we want to do is make you guys get to work. So, thanks guys for watching. If you have any ideas for future broadcasts or little projects you'd like to see us do, uh, drop us a line in, in the comments section either on YouTube or Facebook and we'll do our best to monitor those and hopefully uh, put them on on another future live for you guys. Thanks for watching on that. I'll catch you guys later.